Hi everybody! Today we're going to make the world's easiest risotto, the most um, labor non-intensive risotto, I guess, and we're actually going to be making that using a rice cooker. So, this is like seriously like one of the easiest recipes. I make it all the time because it's a really like a set it and forget it kind of recipe. Normally risottos require you to get, you know, like the Italian arborio rice and slave over a stove um, while you're kind of slowly stirring in the liquid little by little, but if you use a rice cooker, you can actually like avoid a lot of those steps. It's probably gonna get me in trouble with a lot of Italians, so I apologize, but I'm going to be basically making a risotto inspired um, porridge. In Japan, porridge is okayu. In Chinese um, restaurants, it's usually referred to as konji. Uh, but it's basically uh, rice that's been cooked in more water than usual. So it's basically the same short grain white rice. Um, we're just using a lot more liquid. And then we're going to go ahead and cook everything down with a bunch of mushrooms, a couple other flavorings, and then it's going to be a, a set it and forget it. So let's get started. I have a smaller than usual uh, rice cooker, which only makes... Um, up to three cups of steamed rice. So um, different different rice cookers will have different measurements. This one is nice and small because I really don't want to have like a whole bunch of rice sitting around because it's really just me. So these things are really, really handy because they actually have like the, the liquid measurements, liquid suggestion measurements. So here's like white steamed rice and then here is porridge. Um, and then on the other side, you've got like sushi rice and brown rice. Um, so that's, it makes it a lot easier. So you don't need necessarily need to have like cup measurements. And then, um, and then this is like the most prized possession in a lot of Japanese kitchens, which is the rice cup, which by American measurements, I think it ends up being like a third of a cup of rice. Um, but we refer to these as go. So this is Ichigo, so one go. Nigo is two go. Um, and one go is usually about uh, two servings of rice once, once it's cooked. So you go ahead and put that in there. And then you're gonna, in my case, because I'm making a mushroom risotto inspired porridge, um, I'm going to be using a mushroom broth. You can always just use like just water and a bouillon cube if you want as well. And I am going to be filling that up to the one cup, the one go mark. Which conveniently ends up being pretty much an entire container of uh, prepackaged broth. <laughs> so that comes in really helpful too. Um, let me go ahead and quickly stir these together. And then I've got a bunch of different kinds of mushrooms here. Um, I've got some uh, maitake mushrooms, which are these kind of like big fan kind of mushrooms. And then I've got some of these um, clamshell kind of mushrooms. I've got brown ones and white ones, as well as just regular white, you know, regular button mushrooms. And I've cut them into smaller pieces uh, because I kind of want them to all cook down together. So I'm going to go ahead and put all of that in here. I've got about about two cups worth of mushrooms but mushrooms cook down so if you want to add more you are more than free to do so but 
two cups of chopped up fresh mushroom seems to um, do the trick for me. To that, I'm going to add some cracked black pepper because mushrooms always taste better with black pepper. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of thyme. Now, I was hoping to get some fresh, fresh thyme today, but when I went to the supermarket, they were all out. <clears throat> they were all out. So um, dry thyme is just fine, because especially because you're cooking it into a broth, I would do like half teaspoon. I'm sorry, a, a full teaspoon. And then mushroom broth, uh, I'm using a broth that doesn't have any salt. So I will be adding a little bit of extra flavoring. Um, one of the many, many things that Japanese kitchens have are pre-made kind of like sauces and dips and flavoring agents and, and, dried, um, and dried foods. And one of the things that are, is very, very popular is this Chicken. It's like a chicken bouillon, but it's a whole chicken um, soup that's been dehydrated and then turned into a powder as opposed to like, like the American bouillon cubes. Um, so you can add a teaspoon of this chicken bouillon to this mix. If you are opting if you're opting to go for a, um, a more vegetarian or vegan and you want to omit the chicken's chicken bouillon powder, you can totally do that. You can just leave it alone. Just, just add a little bit of salt to compensate um, for leaving that out because the mushroom broth will be kind of bland without it. Or use a traditional mushroom or vegetable stock that's already has salt in it. And then, literally, close it, and then now that's going to cook under just a regular cooking setting. It's going to run up. It's going to run about forty-five minutes. Uh, so I am going to clear all this out and uh, and make a, a a quick kind of like fried mushroom topping. Uh, for when the porridge is done. So stay tuned, I'll be right back. And we're back. While that risotto is cooking, um, we're going to make a quick uh, topper, mushroom topper, uh, just for a little extra texture um, because, you know, risottos can get mushy and so it's kind of nice to have additional textures, especially to put on top. So on top of a frying pan, that we're going to have at medium heat. I'm going to go ahead and add, as they say, a knob of butter, which I guess is probably like a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half. And we're going to go ahead and add the mushrooms. I kind of like went out, of, went out and picked like the prettiest ones out of the box. <laughs> and I probably have more than I need, but that always means that I have extra to snack on. I'm gonna turn that down just a little bit. And because I'm using an unsalted butter, I'm going to add a little bit of salt here. Some black pepper. And some more thyme that kind of matches what we made.
in the risotto. So. Mmm, that smells so good. If you are not allergic to mushrooms, I really encourage you to add mushrooms to your diet. It's really good for you. There's all sorts of vitamins and nutrients. It's a great source of protein. Um, And besides, to me, you know, because I love mushrooms and obviously I'm not allergic, uh, they taste amazing. And each mushroom has like a different kind of flavor profile. So these like little, um, what are they called, clamshell mushrooms, they tend to be a little bit milder in flavor. The maitakes have like uh, kind of like a, a heavier, more almost like a meaty texture. And then button mushrooms are, you know, button mushrooms. They're fairly bland in flavor, but they absorb all the flavors that you give it. So like that butter and the thyme and everything just gets all absorbed. Actually, something interesting that I saw happen during the pandemic is there are a lot of people that got into mushroom harvesting at home and even like here in Las Vegas there was for a time a couple of uh, families that were selling mushrooms uh, online <laughs> from what they were making. You want to get a nice kind of golden coloring to the mushrooms, because that'll look really nice on top of the risotto. I don't know if growing mushrooms is actually all, you know, super easy. If it's, if it is really, really easy, maybe it's something I should look into <laughs> because I do, I love mushrooms so much and they're actually kind of on the expensive side when you buy them at the supermarket, um, especially like these little gourmet ones. Once you've gotten these sufficiently browned up, you can turn the heat off and transfer these over to a plate until our risotto is ready. So let me do that. And then we will be back. This is just to show you what the risotto looks like it, then we're gonna do like a little taste test as well. And we're back. The rice cooker has done a beepy thing and told me that it's ready to serve. So basically we, all we're gonna do is just open this up. And up until now, this is just a mushroom broth rice porridge, right? But what we're gonna do is actually stir this up. And traditionally with risotto, you would add Parmesan cheese, I think. Yeah, Parmesan cheese is usually what gets mixed in. So in our case, I like, I personally like Dubliner cheese, which is an Irish, um, uh, Irish cheese that is actually surprisingly similar to Parmesan. It's um, kind of nutty. Yeah, it's got, it's kind of like halfway between like a Parmesan and I don't know, I think it's a little bit nuttier. It's a little bit stronger. It's not quite like cheddar, but 
it's one of my favorite cheeses. So I actually like mixing that into my porridge. My, my faux risotto. <laughs> And then that gets stirred in. And I don't like to cook the cheese in, you know, while, while the rice is cooking because I think it gets a little too gummy. But mixing it in at the end, like you just get this kind of melty, cheesy goodness. That is our risotto inspired um, <laughs> risotto inspired rice porridge, I guess. But it's not you're not using arborio rice, so it's not an Italian dish. It's not quite a, a Japanese or a Chinese uh, okayu or kanji because you're adding cheese. Um, but to take it one step further, I'm just going to give this a little taste. You can add a dollop of crumb fresh. grilled mushrooms. Oh, it looks so fancy. <laughs> and then just like a little, little bit of parsley. I'm going to give that a taste. Mm. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, it's cheese and mushrooms. What's not to like? <laughs> so tasty. It's, full of flavor. Having all those different kinds of mushrooms in there gives it like a couple of different flavors as you're kind of ch chewing through it. Um, some mushrooms are meatier, some are softer, so you have like the kind of textural difference too. Mm. So good. <laughs> Try some with this maitake mushroom. Delicious. I'm so happy. <laughs> um, and the thing about mushrooms is, you know, some places, some like local mushroom farms will actually do like seasonal mushroom um, strains. <laughs> so you can actually try different kinds of mushrooms in your mushroom risotto porridge. Mm. This is great either by itself with like a little side salad or as a small side by itself with like um, some grilled chicken or salmon. Mm. I didn't add any additional salt, but obviously you can if you want. The, the chicken stock flavoring kind of added that extra salt for me, so I didn't really need to do that. Mm. And the addition of that cheese is just like a... Uh... But if you can't find Dubliner, Dubliner cheese where you are, 
You can totally use um, shredded Parmesan um, or any other kind of cheese that you like. Um, don't use the, the stuff in the green shaker can though, because that doesn't really melt. Um, so that was it. My risotto inspired um, rice cooker porridge. Um, that serving will actually serve anywhere from four to six people, depending on whether you want this as a main dish or as a side. I hope you try it at home. I hope you try different other combinations of like different cheeses and like um, different mushrooms and things like that. And I hope you uh, enjoyed this episode of Nakatomi Test Kitchen and I will see you next time.